Sutra, once your thoughts arise, they can control your body. Since your body is not the same as your thoughts, why is it that your body follows your thoughts and engages in every thought of grasping at objects? A thought arises and the body grasps at things in response to the thought. Commentary, once your thoughts arise, they can control your body. These false thoughts that you have drive your body, but your body is not your thoughts. Since your body is not the same as your thoughts, since the body and the mind are not the same sort of thing, why are they aware of each other? Why is it that your body follows your thoughts and engages in every sort of grasping at objects? Why is it that why, when you give rise to a thought, your body acts accordingly? A thought arises and the body grasps at things in response to the thought. Why is your body controlled by your thoughts? As soon as you have a thought, your body wants to grasp at the object you are thinking about. Why does your body function in unison with your thoughts? What is a thought? You can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 thoughts. But here the text refers to just one thought. The Prana Sutra of the human king who protects his country says that there are 90 shanas in a single thought. A shana is an extremely short period of time. And yet within one shana there are 900 births and deaths, that is 900 production and destructions, thus it is said. When not a single thought arises, the entire substance manifests. When the six sense faculties are suddenly move, one is covered by clouds. If you could keep from having a single thought, the entire substance would manifest. What entire substance? The great function of the entire substance, the treasury of the Tathagata. It is your inherent family treasure. It is the scenery of your homeland. It is your original face. Upon the slightest movement of the six sense faculties, you become obscured by a covering of clouds. If a cultivator reaches the point where he does not have a single thought, then the ghosts and spirits have no way to get at him. If not a single thought arises, then not a single thought passes away. If you cannot prevent thoughts from arising, then you cannot prevent them from passing away. This is an important point. If you can understand it, then when you do not have a single thought, the entire substance will manifest. But if your six faculties move again, you will be obscured by the dark clouds. Sutra, when you are awake, your mind thinks. When you are asleep, you dream, thus your thinking is stirred to perceive false situations. This is a third kind of false thinking which is characterized by interconnectedness. Commentary When you are awake, your mind thinks. A few days ago, I talked about Lord Trang, uh, who was born as his mother was waking up. Because of this, his mother resented him and favored her second son, Kung Su Duan. She wanted the second son to inherit his father's throne and become the king. Therefore, she repeatedly asked King Wu to pass the throne to his younger son rather than to his older son. But King Wu would not allow it, and so Lord Chuang still became the king. When Lord Chuang became king, his mother told Kung Su Duan to instigate a rebellion. But that also failed. So that is the story of Lord Chuang. When you are awake, the thinking skanda is in control. When you are asleep, you dream. When you are asleep, you dream. Your thinking skanda produces dreams. Previously, we mentioned how the thinking skanda could make one perceive things incorrectly in one's sleep. For example, if you are asleep and people are beating on clothes, or pounding right nearby, you may hear it as bells and drums being played. Such a thinking is stirred to perceive the false situations. When you dream, your thinking scandal makes you perceive the false situation of bells and drums being played. 
This is a third kind of false thinking which is characterized by interconnectedness. Interconnectedness means working together. The thinking kind of functions whether you are awake or asleep. So we call this interconnection which means mutual cooperation. This is a third kind of false thinking and it is associated with the thinking skanda. Sutra, the metabolic processes never stop. They progress through subtle changes. Your nails and hair grow, your energy wanes, and your skin becomes wrinkled. These processes be continue day and night and yet you never wake up to them. Commentary, the metabolic processes never stop. Day and night they continue. This is the formation skanda which flows on unceasingly like waves. As one thought ceases, the next one arises. As that thought passes by, the next one comes up. They arise and cease one after another. This metabolic and transformational processes never end. They just go on working, never stopping to rest. They progress through subtle changes, which you cannot perceive because you are so minute. Without your realizing it, the house is moved out from under you, and everything looks different. What are these subtle changes? Your nails and hair grow. If you don't cut your nails for two days, they grow a little bit. After three days, they are a bit longer. After four days, they are longer still. Each day they are longer than the day before. But do you know how much they grow in each second and each minute? Do you know how they grow longer? If you don't trim your hair for a month, it may grow almost a half an inch. But how much does it grow each day? You don't know. You say, well, I've calculated. Sure, but will it be accurate? You can try using a computer to calculate it and see if the computer knows. Your energy wins. Your energy decreases from day to day. People are full of energy and zest in their youth and they also have a lot of vitality in their pram. However, as they get older and they start losing their energy, although it's not totally gone, your skin becomes wrinkled, your skin gets lined like a chicken skin, and your hair turns as white as green feathers. Your features become terribly, terribly aged and you can no longer pass yourself off as a young person. No amount of makeup can transform your 80-year-old face into that of a 20-year-old. These processes continue day and night. This work goes on day and night. Your nails grow, your hair gets longer, your energy wins, and your skin gets wrinkled. It's more reliable than a clock. If you don't wind up your clock, it will stop. But you don't have to wipe up your metabolism. It does its work just the same unless you die. When you're dead, it stops working and yet you never wake up to them. They pursue you day and night through your youth, your pram and your old age right up to your death. After you die, you get reborn and then you have to die again. You undergo endless rounds of birth and death without ever waking up. You go right on being confused through it all. You're muddled when you come and muddled when you go. That's what the false thing of formation skanda is all about. Sutra, if these things aren't part of you, Ananda, then why does your body keep changing? And if they are really part of you, then why aren't you aware of them? Commentary, if these things aren't part of you, and uh, then why does your body keep changing? Your body goes through all these transformations. The nails and hair grow longer. The energy wins and the skin gets wrinkled. You say your fingernails aren't yours. Then why do they continually grow long? You say the, the hair isn't yours. Then why does it keep growing on your head? You say the energy isn't yours. But why do you sometimes feel weak? when your energy is insufficient. If your face is not yours, how is it possible for it to become wrinkled? If you say the wrinkles don't have anything to do with you, why does your face get wrinkled? 
why do those changes occur to your own body if this isn't you then why does your body keep changing from your youth you are transported into middle age from middle age you move on to old age from old age you go right on to death you cannot say these things are not yours if this isn't your body isn't your body then you are not real and if you insist that they are really part of you then why aren't you aware of them you why can't you sense them at all your nails your and your hair are growing but you do not perceive it happening your energy is waning but you do not feel it your face is getting wrinkled but you cannot detect it nor do you know when the change took place this is a double refutation if you say they belong to you that's incorrect but if you say they do not belong to you that's also incorrect also what is it you ask is false thinking that's their source their own creations of false thinking Sutra, your formation skanda continues in thought after thought without cease. It is the fourth kind of false thinking which is subtle and hidden. Commentary, your formation skanda functions continuously, but its subtle movements are not at all easy to perceive. They are secret and obscure, and you are not aware of them at all. This is a fourth kind of false thinking which is associated with the formation skanda. Sutra, finally, if your pure, bright, clear, and unmoving state is permanent, then there should be no seeing, hearing, awareness, or knowing in your body. If it is genuinely pure and true, it should not contain happiness or falseness. Commentary, finally, if your pure, bright, clear, and unmoving state is permanent, then there should be no seeing, hearing, awareness, or knowing in your body. At this point, when you experience a pure brilliance and your state is clear and uh, in petrol bubble, if you say this is a permanent state, then the functions of seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing should not occur in your body. If it is genuinely pure and true, it should not contain habits or falseness. Habits and false thinking should not arise. Sutra, how does it happen then that having seen some unusual thing in the past, you eventually forget it over time until neither memory nor forgetfulness of it remain. But then later, upon suddenly seeing that unusual thing again, you remember it clearly from before without forgetting a single detail. How can you keep track of the permission that goes on in thought after thought in this pure, clear, and unmoving consciousness. Commentary. How does it happen then that having seen more unusual thing in the past, you eventually forget it over time until neither memory nor forgetfulness of it remain? What is the reason for this? You may have seen something very peculiar, but after many years, you have no memory of it and you have no forgetfulness of it either. If you are able to say that you've forgotten something, that means you still have some recollection of its occurrence. However, now there is neither memory nor forgetfulness of it. But then later, upon suddenly seeing that unusual thing again, you remember it clearly from before without forgetting a single detail. If you suddenly see that strange thing again, you will recall how you remembered it, how you encountered it in the past, and how it appeared to you then. You will not forget a single detail. How can you keep track of the permission that goes on in thought after thought in this pure, clear, and unmoving consciousness? In that clear and unmoving state, the kind of permission is going on in thought after thought. How does one keep track of this? How does one recollect it? How do you explain the situation of having put something completely out of mind only to remember it again when you encounter it again? Before seeing it again, you cannot recall it.